for the free Stanley boy. You're the man for me, Stanley boy. You've no way of knowing, but I've a way of showing what you mean to me, Stanley boy. When there are gray skies, we don't mind the gray skies. You make Hello, and welcome to another week of From Piccadilly to Wigan Pier. Now this week we're looking at politics and the 1935 election. Now as already mentioned before, in uh, October 1931 the national government won a landslide election victory and you might be thinking based on some of the sources that we've looked at so far such as Love on the Dole and Priestley's account of poverty on Tyneside you might expect that Labour would do very well in the 1935 election. But in fact, the Conservative dominated government under the leadership of Stanley Baldwin won another landslide election victory um, in 1935. Now, why was Baldwin so successful? Um, this is a particularly interesting question to think about because he's a figure who's now largely forgotten when we think about the major political figures of the mid 20th century. Um, figures such as Winston Churchill and Clement Attlee um, are much more easily recognisable. But Baldwin was the leading political figure of the interwar years as Conservative Party leader from 1923 to 37, And he was um, a widely popular figure at the time. In fact, there was a series of four volumes of his political speeches that were published during the 1920s and 1930s, and this is one of them. Well, I think part of the reason that Baldwin is now largely forgotten is that he's associated with the controversial policy of appeasing Germany during the 1930s. But it's also the product of the very moderate um, image that he promotes for himself. So the mid-1930s is a time in which extremist governments are um, dominant in a large number of European countries. So at this time we have fascist governments in Italy and Germany, and also popular front governments which included the extreme left in France and Spain. So Baldwin is someone who presents himself as very much a moderate figure um, who promotes English values in opposition to the extremes. Baldwin also plays up his moderate English credentials to criticise his opponents at home. So Arthur Henderson and the Labour Party are presented as supporting the extremist class interests of the trade unions and they're also often presented as being um, overly sympathetic to the Soviet Union, such as in this cartoon. And then on the right, um, Mosley and the fascists are again presented as being un-English and Mosley is often presented as um, trying to be a, a mini Mussolini in some ways. I'm just going to show you a clip now um, from the 1980s adaptation of the Jeeves and Worcester novels which appeared on ITV. Now, um, this features the character Roderick Spode, who's obviously um, based on Oswald Mosley. And although the TV adaptation presents him as more of a Hitler than a Mussolini figure, I think it's quite true to the book. So the image of Roderick Spode in some ways kind of chimes um, to some extent with Baldwin's criticisms of the un-English values of fascism. Brother Black Shorts, as I stand before you tonight, we are on the brink of victory. Our policies are clear, our policies are just, our policies are fully laid out in my book with the England price fee and sixpence for all good booksellers. Our policies are, one, the right, nay, the duty of every freeborn Englishman to grow his own potatoes. <laughs> So that's a short clip and it's well worth checking out the longer version of that video. So Baldwin is successful to a large extent in presenting himself as a moderate Englishman, but this success is also based on him being a more effective proponent of new forms of media such as radio and newsreel than his opponents in the Labour Party such as Ramsay MacDonald during the 1920s and then Clement Attlee after 1935. If the country gets into financial straits, or if outside in the world it loses confidence, then the first to suffer will be the very poorest of our people. 
The leader of the Labour Party, Major Acton. The government says that we must rearm, but there's no safety in great armaments. Mr. Baldwin has said the bomber will always get through. His colleague, Lord Londonderry, boasts of having prevented air disarmament. It's suggested by some people that those who oppose the government are not patriots. Now those two clips are from the British Movie Tone archive which has recently been placed on YouTube and is an excellent resource to look at if you're thinking about political broadcasting during the 1920s and 1930s. So I hope to have shown with that introduction that if you're interested in writing about this subject it's worth thinking about the discussion of policies in the National Government Manifesto and Baldwin's election broadcast but it's also worth thinking about the context in which um, these sources are produced. And then finally I think it's worth thinking about how Baldwin uses new forms of technology such as radio and newsreel and how this compares to his opponents.